Like, I, I prefer audiences where I can learn everybody's name. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm here today to talk about social VR and, like, how people express themselves creatively uh, within social VR. So uh, I kind of pulled the audience uh, a few moments ago and learned that I, I should uh, start with the basics. So why don't we do that? So uh, what you're seeing is uh, a picturesque scene from a social VR platform called VTime. So VTime includes a lot of uh, very idyllic digital locations where you as an avatar can go and interact with other people that are recognizably human. So uh, actually, in this scene, there are four people, including you, the viewer. On the other side of the spectrum, we have experiences like the Wave VR, in which the people are not recognizably human. Uh, they could be these weird neon animals. Uh, you're in digital environments that are really impossible as representations of the real world. And a lot of the rules governing uh, your movement and interactions are completely unique to the platform. So it's you and a bunch of other people, maybe friends, maybe strangers, uh, just having a good time listening to music and like, uh, interacting in ways that the social VR platform affords you. So when you're translating our reality into social VR, uh, you're finding new ways of interacting with uh, the environment, engaging with other people, and also finding new ways to understand and express yourself. And it's this final point that we're going to focus on today, a creative expression inside of social VR and VR apps in general. So uh, the ways you can crea uh, create in social VR, they include things like the visual arts, uh, acting, filmmaking. They can include music, of course. And then finally, uh, world building. And it's this final point that is very much unique to social VR, whereas uh, the other art forms are very general. They've existed for really thousands of years. So beginning with the visual arts, I want to talk about uh, one app in particular, Tilt Brush. And it has an equivalent uh, for uh, the Oculus uh, headset called Quill. And in both of them, you are able to build uh, these immersive 360 environments. Uh, which are like living inside of a painting, uh, sometimes a, a moving painting that is very vivid. So there you are. <laughs> OK, so uh, in these uh, visual art apps, uh, you are able to produce uh, unique, uh, engaging works that are very, very affecting uh, because, because uh, it, it's all around you. It encompasses your whole field of vision. Uh, the artwork itself uh, can be uh, beautiful or touching or intriguing. And uh, as this uh, kind of expression is new, we find that there are some uh, early rising stars uh, within uh, these uh, VR art apps, such as uh, Danny Bittman, who uh, has produced a work here, but now finds himself doing music videos with mainstream artists like uh, Billy Corrigan of the Smashing Pumpkins, formerly. But we've also found that people uh, are interested in reproducing works uh, that exist right now in museums. Uh, here we see line by line uh, a wheat field by Vincent van Gogh being created. And uh, if we look at the works side by side, uh, you can see that the first one made in tilt brush, uh, the first one made in tilt brush is uh, recognizably uh, an homage to Vincent van Gogh, where, whereas we see the real work here. Um, this first work, it might not be as professionally done as, a, as the second work, but you can walk through this wheat field. Like, you can, you can stand in the middle of the wheat stalks and, uh, like, see them rise uh, to chest level. So it's a new way of experiencing a work uh, that has existed for more than a century. But, of course, if you are a non-artist like me, or non-visual artist, uh, you can go in and uh, just vandalize the space, uh, making electric pigs that are burning farmers and things like that. So uh, it's a way for um, non-creatively gifted people just to F things up. <laughs> so. And uh, with social VR, uh, we can take uh, VR uh, art apps uh, that exist and exhibit the work uh, that has been created. And we can also exhibit things that exist already in more traditional uh, formats. 
For example, in Sansar, uh, which is uh, the Linden Labs social VR app, uh, they have a Hollywood art museum where they have uh, regular exhibitions and Q&A sessions. Uh, this one uh, with Drew Struzan, uh, yeah, he's the uh, artist behind a, a lot of the old Star Wars work. Uh, Drew came into uh, Sansar and just answered questions with a bunch of different fans. So it's a way for people around the world to have like FaceTime uh, with these artists. So moving on to filmmaking, uh, we have VR apps like uh, Mindshow and Flipside. And these are apps in which uh, you have characters which you inhabit. You are able to act out a scene uh, multiple times if you choose. And then uh, once you've acted out those scenes, you're able to film them as if they're a video. So um, this is what it looks like. So first, you choose your characters. Uh, they have, as you see, a, a few pages of characters to choose from. So once you've chosen a character, you place them. And uh, if you look, it says very small hop in. Uh, that's a command to jump into that character. So suddenly, you see them from a first person perspective. And you can check yourself out, see if you like your placement, choose an emotion such as happy or sad or angry or shocked. And then you act out a scene. And uh, it can be whatever you want. Most people go with comedy uh, because uh, the environment uh, pushes you in that direction, just to uh, have some jokey interaction. And then once that is done, uh, you are able to become the cameraman and record the scene. So once it's recorded, you can then upload it to social media, uh, such as YouTube and so forth. And you also have the uh, option of remixing someone else's scene. So people can like, uh, create prompts for their friends, and their friends uh, jump into scenes as other characters and uh, like finish the scene. So this is a way of collaborative storytelling through VR apps. So uh, things like these, uh, not only for filmmaking, but in other artistic um, genre, uh, they're able to use a social media integration uh, to build a strong foundation of users. Uh, using things like uh, Steam, YouTube, or uh, Twitter uh, to promote themselves. But when they promote themselves, in turn, they are promoting uh, the platform itself. So uh, in the end, you have a very complex network of users um, with that form a strong base. And uh, over time, this will attract many other users. And in the same way, you can have art galleries within social VR, uh, which people can uh, come in and visit. Uh, there have been uh, several film festivals now uh, in social VR. Uh, this is a, a still from the, uh, the first of them, uh, which is uh, Alt Space VR's uh, Siberia Film Festival, which happened about a year ago. And there have been several since then. So these don't feature, feature uh, VR films uh, necessarily. They can be like standard short films and art films, but uh, it is a venue for them to, to come and exhibit their work and appreciate the work as an audience. And then, of course, music, uh, which is very high on a lot of people's lists. Uh, VR does enhance uh, or at least change how you can uh, make and perform music. So this is an example from Lyra VR. Oh, I do have audio. Yeah, where someone as a novice can come in and make random shapes yeah, to create specific tones. And if you're a non-professional like me, uh, you are choosing uh, formations just based on their aesthetic value. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so someone who is non-gifted in music like myself can come in and make something that uh, for the moment sounds appealing and they can be proud of it. They are, in fact, empowered by the VR app, but a more professional uh, uh, composer could make something like, make something like this, uh, which, could, uh, which could easily be done uh, in a recording studio or uh, with a home mixing board. Yeah, and then, of course, uh, as with the other art forms, uh, some jerk like myself can come in and remix it. <laughs> So it's a way for uh, professionals and non-professionals alike uh, to create something unique and derive some pleasure out of it, uh, to varying levels of success, of course. 
And then uh, in the end, you are able to do live performance. Uh, this is a shot from South by Southwest, which happened a few weeks ago now, uh, in which uh, the Wave VR had their own stage, uh, where somebody, a DJ, uh, was uh, performing from within VR. A live audience was watching them, as you are watching me now. And also, there was an audience inside VR. So you're actually merging these realities uh, in the performance of music. Right, but all the instrumentation uh, was done from within VR. Uh, so uh, she sees her turntables and her, her laptop, you know, uh, music making equipment. And uh, everyone else uh, who's there in the room with her uh, can see what she's doing uh, on screen. So uh, now I'd like to draw our attention to a project that's being done within uh, the VR First Lab and Bache Shahir University. Would you like to introduce Jonas? <laughs> oh, no, you're not mic'd. OK, so uh, Jonas and I work together in uh, the VR First Lab at Bache Shahir University. And uh, Jonas is demoing uh, something called uh, Simulacra VR uh, upstairs, uh, which will be ready uh, soon, uh, we hope, right? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so that's getting ready. And it is another example of uh, uh, making art uh, inside of VR. He's uh, doing a lot to, uh, to blend uh, different, uh, different uh, inputs uh, to uh, create an output within a, another sense, like using, uh, using voice to create something visual and so forth. Any questions so far? <laughs> OK, save it for the end. What's your favorite game? My favorite? Okay. Um, well, uh, that question comes from Michael, who is presenting after me, uh, like his, uh, his thoughts on uh, different music videos. So uh, I'm afraid of whatever I answer is not going to be good enough. But. <laughs> But uh, Lyra VR for uh, music production uh, has been the best so far, but uh, it's the only one I've tried that's specifically uh, geared towards that. Uh, but the Wave VR, which I've talked about twice now, is incredible. Like, it's really incredible. Um, for those who uh, did see Ready Player One, they would have seen a, a club called the Distracted Globe, uh, which is a, a zero-gravity room where uh, the characters uh, like, can dance and have a fancy party. And uh, they, they actually made it inside of uh, the Wave VR. So uh, a lot of what they do is very impressive. And the, the, cr the creators, designers themselves are uh, professional uh, developers and musicians at the same time. It's kind of the criteria for being there is you have to like, uh, be a musician. Do we need it? Has anyone tried VR yet? Like, apart from you two, <laughs> you work in the lab with me. Awesome. Well, um, that's like, um, so my talk is finished because I only had like five minutes. No, you're okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, basically, I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be here today to talk about uh, music in VR. Uh, this has been my interest for uh, almost three years now. Um, and uh, I've been following Lance's stuff, which he writes on, on Medium. He writes a lot about uh, VR, and uh, there was this article which was talking about homuncular uh, flexibility, which basically talks about how your, 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 a human body can be mapped uh, to how much neurons are used for specific parts of the body. So when you look at this kind of interface, you can uh, immediately understand how 
um, your body can be used as an input uh, to make any kind of uh, interesting instrument. So how did I start on this project? Um, it started in the beginning as uh, trying to understand really what is VR. So when you try to answer this question, what is VR, then you come up with really interesting um, intuitions. You will understand that you really are trying to make a visual uh, programming language so that uh, you can really understand what's happening uh, in the external world. There are some uh, interesting instruments that people are already busy with, like the theremin in Turkey. There are some uh, few people working on uh, interesting instruments like uh, Yai Bahar and uh, maybe microtonal guitar. This, this takes many years to build, and, many, uh, and it takes, of course, um, a lot of experience in signal processing. So, and if you don't have musicality, as you said, uh, if you don't know how to play, then it will be really hard to build an instrument. So with VR, basically you come and you, you create an interface. So an instrument is basically becomes an interface. Uh, a simple example is with the theremin, where you just move your hands. Um, you think there is something in between. There is a medium which you are controlling. So when you have a, a VR uh, environment, you can literally know what exactly you are uh, changing in that environment. So the other thing that really interests me about instruments in general is, is that they, they are, most instruments were made uh, and also they were used as weapons in, when people uh, are involved in combat. So most instruments really depend on, on how much strength you have. So they really depend on your body structure. To play an instrument, you had to be a certain uh, uh, figure. So this is also another kind of uh, connection you can see here. So with the project that uh, Lance was showing you, called EXA. Uh, this this uh, project has a high philosophy of uh, user experience, um, of UX and UI. So because an instrument in VR is basically just a high emphasis on UX and UI. So with this project that I'm uh, busy with here, um, which you can come and check later today if you have time, um, basically, uh, what we are doing is we take, um, we compare two things, uh, traditional instruments. Is, uh, this? Next one? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is what you have. You have traditional instruments, which we all know. So you can hit drums, and which are space. They are based on space. And traditionally, what you have also is that you have audio, um, which is digital. So that is another traditional instrument. But the interesting thing is hyper instruments. So what, what we have is that an instrument doesn't know uh, what it's playing. When you hit a keyboard or you hit a setting instrument, it doesn't know what you're actually doing to it because um, it doesn't understand. So, but when you bring everything in a virtual space, you are dealing with information. So here we have to really ask ourselves, what is music? And as a result, we will take all that information and then use it to create better instruments that can be more suitable for us. So this can be done with uh, machine learning. There are already some uh, algorithms from Google. Some people are working on it, like uh, RNN, uh, some uh, algorithm like that, and other... Uh, other algorithms for uh, data structures for classifying sounds which sound similar. So if you are playing, if let's say you like uh, classical uh, music, and of course you want to play your music in the best instrument that is made for that music. So this would be a very nice adventure. You want to play a guitar which is uh, made for rock music, um, so 
this is where we can find the in-betweenness. VR is where you deal with the real information, and AI is actually the opposite of what's happening in a virtual reality because you are taking information which is real and creating a fake um, kind of... Uh, um, you use all that information which is true to create a new um, analogy based on that, which is not really a true statement at the end of the day. So with hyper instruments, you can also have these ki uh, kinetic audio-visual interactions. So laser hub is an example of that um, because you are moving and then you are affecting the, the, the visuals. As a result, you get a different sound. So that will take really long time to build in reality, but not in VR. This, again, is a project which, which is done by MIT called Hyper Instruments, and they just dedicated the lab into building this instrument. So it is... This is uh, what really is interesting uh, right now. Taking the information that we have, we have so much information. Uh, we have this thing called uh, prosthetic knowledge, where you have this information that you don't know that you know, and you can, if you harness it, you, we can really come up with uh, interesting instruments. Okay. Okay. Um, another reason why I chose to work on this project, uh, to look at uh, musical instruments in VR, um, is because uh, one of the founders of VR, um, in the beginning, they, they had to design um, haptic devices, which are just more like um, getting sensations of instruments. So they created this thing called body electric, and they created something called an iPhone, before there was an iPhone. And so these were all made to, to create music or to create visual programming languages. Okay. Uh. So the, my, my uh, project, now you can come and test it if you are interested in uh, seeing how far instruments can go in VR and if you want to experience what it means to, to, to have music in a different, let's say, dimension. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, if, uh, if anyone wants to talk to Jonas more, uh, like, uh, he'll be upstairs demoing. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, wrap up this talk. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> by talking about uh, social VR platforms, uh, giving these few examples. Uh, because uh, we are, uh, as humans, uh, naturally creative. Uh, from the time we're young, uh, we're driven to uh, create and express ourselves. And like maybe education kind of beats that out of us, uh, but uh, it's still alive in most people, uh, the drive to uh, express ourselves in one way or another. So uh, all of these different platforms, they have different approaches uh, for, uh, for this uh, issue. For example, Altspace uh, is very low in, uh, in the ways you can express yourself and how, uh, how much customization there is. But it does provide a very good event space. So if you are, in fact, a live performer, such as a, a lecturer, an improviser, or a, a musical artist, uh, you can go there. And you will definitely be able to find an audience, uh, an audience from around the world. Experiences like uh, my favorite, uh, Rec Room, uh, they have a few uh, powerful tools uh, for building environments. Uh, for example, the Maker Pen, uh, which you see here. Uh, the Maker Pen is a kind of drawing tool, but it's also used for making uh, objects. And uh, the objects themselves, they, they can be like room-sized objects. So you can make some uh, very um, elaborate uh, different things. Uh, and at the same time, they're simple, so uh, they're accessible to both uh, professional artists and non-professionals alike. And uh, having these tools also uh, helps their aesthetic uh, persist. So, when uh, you're inside Rec Room, like, even though you're creating your own space, it still looks like Rec Room. Another tool is the Holotar, uh, which is a hologram that allows you to act, uh, say a few lines, uh, which will be triggered uh, anytime anybody else comes close to the hologram. Oops. 
and uh, also circuits, which allows for some programming of different objects uh, from within Rec Room. Uh, we'll see some examples here. Uh, Alan and Desk Meets Head is a group that made the D&D Room, which allows people to do uh, fantasy role playing from within VR. And with all of these different buttons, uh, they can keep score and change pos positions. Uh, some people are making uh, all of America's restaurant chains uh, inside of Rec Room. Uh, this example is Chili's. And uh, using the holograms, people who are entering inside the restaurant will be greeted by a host who just suddenly appears and say, hello, welcome to Chili's. And other people who are a bit more ambitious, like uh, Marissa, uh, you can see her in the corner there, uh, are recreating very grand, uh, very grand um, like works of uh, civilization, right? such as the Roman Colosseum. The way VR, which I'm now mentioning for the third time, uh, is not customizable at all. Uh, but the rules that govern that environment uh, are very different. Uh, they're responsive, and the things you do uh, within that environment, uh, they have uh, different responses. So the, the very act of being there and interacting with other people and uh, objects within the environment uh, are a creative act. So when you're inside the way VR, you yourself feel like a genius, like, yeah, like, because you're having such a great time uh, acting there and uh, creating through uh, your movements uh, that uh, you, you feel more artistic, if that is a feeling, uh, just by being present there. And Anyland, which I haven't mentioned yet, is probably the most customizable uh, with regard to uh, programming and objects. So they have their internal programming language, uh, uh, which uh, drives uh, engineers around the world to uh, sit there and build things uh, that have uh, very uh, unique actions. For example, people have made hats that light up whenever you speak, or uh, they make cookies that amplify your voice. And uh, they have tools inside there where you can uh, kind of speak into, uh, into your menu. Here you see the word robot. Uh, somebody said robot, and all of the people who have ever made a robot inside of any land uh, can find their robots here. And you just choose the one you want and then put it in the environment. Uh, so uh, to conclude, uh, social VR is not necessarily enhancing uh, human creativity. Uh, even without uh, the advent of technology, we are creative. Like, we like to build art. But uh, social VR does different things uh, to the access uh, for, for lay people uh, like myself and maybe some of you. Uh, who uh, haven't spent years in art school. What it does, it helps us overcome barriers uh, with regard to uh, resources, uh, resources being uh, materials or the money for materials, because anything that you want to build inside uh, VR uh, can be done uh, like infinitely many times, and it won't like, cost you more money. Like, you can just build something again and again. And the time to build something, for example, the Roman Colosseum, uh, is, uh, is very drastic uh, because uh, you could build a Roman Colosseum within a week, uh, but in real life, uh, even today, it would be a project of many, many years. So also, uh, the time you invest in getting the skills uh, to build something in art or to make a, a sculpture or something like that, uh, you can do much more quickly inside of uh, VR just because the tools are so simple. Uh, distance, meaning uh, you can get an audience uh, from around the world. Uh, you don't need to be just located in one place. And uh, in the end, you can make worlds and environments that defy physical law. Uh, you're, you're making places that are impossible in the real world. But suddenly now, because of VR and social VR, uh, we can go to those places that were just visions or dreams, and we can be there together. So uh, quickly, this is a list of all the social VR uh, uh, platforms that I talked about and uh, the VR apps. Uh, I had to throw in Facebook Spaces and VR Chat at the end because I didn't get around to them. Uh, but they, they are doing uh, many of the same things as these platforms, and they are actually probably the two biggest ones. So. 
All right, uh, and that is it. Um, contact details are, are up there, and uh, both of us are members of uh, the VR First Lab at Bacchishir University. So, like, any questions or information, just let us know. All right, thank you. <laughs>